Uh, I've also invited now another presenter to make a presentation and she's Teresa Simmons, the regional manager of the Asia Pacific Regional Office of the Good Shepherds International Foundation. We have 49 Good Shepherd members who are participating in our training. And she was sharing with me how the Good Shepherd Asia Pacific has organized bi-weekly sessions over the last six months on six Good Shepherd position papers, migration, trafficking, the girl child, prostitution, economic justice, and integral ecology. I've invited her to share with us the evolving mission of the Good Shepherd Network and its impact on their projects from an advocacy perspective. Over to you, Teresa. Thank you so much, Tino. Um, I will now share screen. I hope you um, can see my screen. Is it all right? Okay, thank you so much. Um, I want to uh, express gratitude to Tino for this invitation. Uh, to share at this platform on the um, Good Shepherd Sisters and uh, what we are doing in terms of the rights-based approach. I will not share our works because we are in 72 countries and it's uh, really too much to share, but I would like to share the process that we are currently undertaking to shift from where we are uh, to the rights-based approach. We draw inspiration uh, from the, our founders, St. Mary Euphrasia, who was truly a social activist during her time. Uh, she broke boundaries, she was audacious. Um, you know, she, she was really a woman that was beyond her time, a, a visionary and a prophetic person. So we draw inspiration from our founders and also within the Good Shepherd congregation, our social justice issues are guided by six position papers that we have, which Dino just mentioned. And these six position papers evolved out of our work within the congregation on um, migration, trafficking, prostitution, the girl child, economic justice, integral ecology. And the first time these papers were produced was in 2011 uh, from our Justice and Peace office in New York. Uh, by the way, Good Shepherd also has um, ECOSOC status um, at the UN. And it was revised again in 2018, bringing in contemporary issues and um, issues that uh, were evolving at the UN level and globally as well. So our justice positions are anchored on this six position papers and also the congregational direction that we had in 2015 when we had our chap the general chapter was an, um, a very clear guide, guideline to all our programs in Good Shepherd to develop clear strategic plans integrating spirituality and justice and peace with good ministry practices, holding, a, holding ourselves accountable to monitor and evaluate the results. So if we look at where we are and where we want to go, it was very clear to the congregation that we wanted to um, examine where we are coming from and therefore the spirituality, what drives us as Good Shepherd, and looking at the social justice issues and saying, how do we address root causes and systemic injustices? And at the same time, looking at our programs and saying, are our programs rights-based? Are our programs based on good ministry practice? So we were on this evolution of moving from a charity-based approach to a needs-based approach, to a rights-based approach. For most of us, like in the first session when we had this training, we were asked are our programs on rights-based, are we a needs-based? And there was a combination of different responses. And that is very similar to Good Shepherd as well. When we look at this congregation direction statement, our position papers, we realized that these two direction statements were calling us to a rights-based approach where we address the issues surrounding women and children, in particular girls and communities, on the six position papers that we have. Issues surrounding these program participants, the surrounding society, the family, and also bringing up the issues right up to a policy level, right up to the government, right up to the UN level. And we realized that we were at very, very different stages in the congregation, depending on the location of our programs, which country we were located in, 
the systemic issues that surrounded our own programs, the political issues that uh, were surrounding the Good Shepherd Ministries in the different places. So if we were based in, say, the US or Australia, New Zealand, and places where um, the rights-based approach is part of the system, then it was easier to be rights-based. Assuming we are in countries where we are still transiting from a military junta situation, where um, social justice is um, very challenging, then it was also very challenging for the program to be rights-based. As we were discovering all this, we also realized that the rights-based approach is actually the Catholic social teachings. It's, uh, has, it has its, it's, um, the Catholic social teachings also underpin the rights-based approach. So I want to share with you these four quadrants of change and the questions that we constantly ask ourselves in Good Shepherd. And if you're hearing me speak at this moment and you're wondering if I'm listening to uh, all the speakers speak, how do we actually get there from where we are to a rights-based approach? What I'm sharing with you now is the four quadrants of change. Starting from on the, on the uh, left, you will see uh, the internal structures, which is quadrant one and quadrant three. And to the right, we have the external, which is quadrant two and quadrant four. Don't worry if you are finding it difficult to follow. The slides are with Tino and he will share with all of you. And we have here at the top half of this quadrant, the individual and the bottom half, the collective. We all know, um, you and I, that for any change to happen, the first change needs to happen in the change maker. And that shift in consciousness in each one of us needs to happen before the entire system that we are in is able to shift. So the first quadrant that we always ask ourselves as Good Shepherd is, where am I in my own value system and thinking based on a rights-based approach? How do I view the program participants who are coming to Good Shepherd uh, for the interventions that we can offer? Do we see these individuals as individuals who deserve help or are they individuals who have rights and are entitled to rights? When this shift happens, we actually find that our own paradigm shifts and when we look at the person, the interventions that we offer shifts and it offers from just offering um, uh, interventions that address manifestations. It, it, it makes us ask the questions, why is this happening to this individual? What are the individual's rights that have been violated? Next, I would like to move to the quadrant three from an individual consciousness to an organizational consciousness. What is the consciousness of our organization in all the different places where we are located? What are our vision, mission, and core values? Are they aligned to the rights-based approach? What will it take us as a community, as an organization, to make the mindset shift to the rights-based approach? Unless we shift in our paradigm, it is very difficult for us to shift from a needs to a rights-based approach because it calls us to review our entire intervention. Next, we come to quadrant two, which are related to the skill sets to the, of the individuals. We ask ourselves, what skills do I have to implement the rights-based approach? For many of us, we are in a system that has been there for years. And we normally learn how to run a program from the person that we are taking over. And what kind of training do we have? What kind of skills do we need to make that shift? And therefore, when um, this opportunity to be part of the ERI training came about, uh, Good Shepherds in Asia Pacific had, were on the brink, we are on the brink of finishing our six months training on our position papers. And we said, how, um, how blessed we are that we have this next 10 weeks to look at this quadrant two and to ask each of us, all 49 of us who are part of this training, what do I need to relearn from the way I have been running my ministry, my program, or the Good Shepherd program. And here we have in quadrant four, what are the changes that need to be done in our interventions, in our policies, in our governance structures to enable our organization to be right space? We cannot do a rights-based program 
unless our internal is right space as well. And the most critical thing that we are asking ourselves always, always is, do we need to review our human resources? Do our human resource match the aspirations of where we want to go to? Are our premises rights-based premises? Does it promote the dignity and empower the women and the children who are part of our programs? Do we have the right people in the right roles? These are some of the questions that we ask ourselves. Um, I'm open to questions later on. Um, I was asked to only present for five minutes and I will stop here. But I hope that these questions that I've posed will make uh, us reflect further on our programs because in today's terms and what we are seeing, it is not enough to just do needs-based. We need to be able to incorporate within the needs-based structure to elevate our programs to a right space and to challenge ourselves into uncomfortable zones of saying, what are the laws in the country saying? How am I looking at this, people, this person and say, what are the rights that this person is entitled to within the country that we, we are in now? So with that, um, I just want to say thank you for this opportunity. And I share with you this uh, logo that we have here, which is our next congregational chapter logo, drawn by love, passionate for justice. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Teresa. That was really very powerful. That was the last message from <laughs> Sister Rita Pays in Goa.